are you up to? Getting ready for Cam. Who's Cam? You've never heard of Cam Lawson, the writer, who came here? Oh, her. She's coming back today to interview me. She wants to know all about my tragic life. And you're going to let her see this room? Is it really that bad? Stomach turning. Boys, out of the way. Come on. Move your heads out of the way. Everybody, camp's here. Oh, we need a hand. Oh. Say cheese. Uh, Justine, right? Um... Louise. It's for the best. He'll only break it. He breaks everything. He's famous for it. How does it work? Show me. No! No way! You're not supposed to be here. It's me you came to see. Tracy! Tell her. We've got an interview, remember? Smile. Tell them to go away. Tell her you don't want us to. Oh, Tracy, Ow! please. Now, Ow! both of you. Now, I have to write an article about life in this place. No, but it's an article about me. But I will need to know about everything that goes on in the home, in your home. So, why don't you girls help me by making a film about life here? A doctor say. <sighs> yeah, but Cam... She'll just spoil it. She spoils everything. She's famous for it. Yeah, I think three will be too many. And um, perhaps it should be Louise and Justine who make the film. <gasps> Cam! And I'm afraid, Tracy, you'll have to stay with me so I can interview you one-to-one. -one. Boring. <laughs> Jenny won't mind us using her office. It's the best place for a major interview. Oh, no, I hate offices. I prefer to talk to you in your natural habitat. My room! No, can't wait! This is a film about where kids have to live until someone comes to foster them. We call this the dumping ground. Because it's a dump. Oh, nice room. Wish I could keep mine as tidy as yours. It's not my room. It's just a room where I've been dumped. If I was fostered, I'd have a real room, which would really be mine. Is that what you want most? No. What I want most is for my mum to come and fetch me, obviously. But until then, you've got to make someone want to foster me. Oh, I'm not sure I'd know how to do that. By writing an article about me, of course. And saying how totally brilliant I am to have around. So come on, we haven't got all day, you know. You're in the movies. Go on. This is Peter. Peter, what do you like most about the dumping ground? The garden. He likes the garden because he's a weed. <laughs> Please be in our movie. You must be. I've got things to do. It will break our hearts. What we need is someone handsome and hunky, just like you. <laughs> To write 1,000 words. I'll need a few good ones to describe you. I'm sweet. The real you. The real me. How about nice? Intelligent. Kind. Lively. Obedient. Strong-willed. I don't think... Mischievous. Gentle, cuddly, cute. Loud, gutsy, stroppy. No, those are all the wrong words. If you write that, no one will want to foster me. And I'll be stuck here in the dumping ground forever. <laughs> I'm sure that won't happen. It won't, as long as you write down everything that I tell you to write. Ready? Tracy is good and kind and gentle, and she's the most popular girl at every single school she's been to. Wherever she goes, she's loved and cherished by everyone. 
And this is Tracy Beaker, who's new today. Would anybody like to volunteer to look after Tracy? This is Mike, who never gets embarrassed. <laughs> Louise? This is Adele and her boyfriend, who are in love. Oh, is this your mum? Did I mention her in the article? Yeah. But don't say she's coming to fetch me, or no one will want to foster me. Just say, say her career keeps her busy. And what does she do? She's a journalist. Everyone famous is dying to be interviewed by her. But really, I'm the only person that she wants to talk to and write about. This is Tracy, showing off. <laughs> Go away, it's private! <laughs> so immature. Cam, hmm? can a journalist find out anything? Good journalist, Cam. Are you a good journalist? Well, I'm trying to be. You can find out where my mum is. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> this is Maxie, who is bullying Ryan. Who couldn't be in our docu-soap, even if he begged to be. Right, that camera. I wouldn't be wasting my time making a docu-soap. I'd be making money. Well, you haven't got it. I have. So how do we make money, then? First. Be nice to Maxie. What good's he gonna be? Ladies, trust me on this. See. Isn't that great? I think the rest of the bunch are in the attic. Why don't you try and find them? So you can talk. Oh, and tell me as soon as you know she's coming. I need time to pack. Tracy. OK, I'm going, I'm going. This was Tracy's idea, right? Right. But you haven't agreed to do it. Well, I just thought if I found out where she was, I could tell her Tracy's here and that she's doing fine. Tracy's mum knows she's here. If she wants to get in touch with her, all she has to do is pick up the phone. Oh, I see. Maxie, would you be so kind as to carry this for me? she'd like to say to you. What is going on in here? Get this place cleaned up and sort out your story. And it better be good. more difficult than I thought. You said journalists could find out anything. I said good journalists could. You said that you were. Don't you exaggerate sometimes? You know, say things you know aren't exactly true. You lied. You lied to me. How's 
never going to make us any money. It's obvious, isn't it? We syndicate to one of those telly programmes that pay hundreds of pounds for videos of accidents. They'll love it. <laughs> Brilliant. It can't fail. As long as Justine remembered to switch the camera. Just because you'd be that stupid doesn't mean anybody else would be. You did remember to press the red button. What red button? No one told me about any red button. Don't waste your time, Zach. You haven't got an accident to send them, thanks to Justine. But we have, and it is thanks to Justine. Look! a bit. Perhaps we're both allergic to something. Brows, maybe. I'm sorry. Sorry? Yeah, well, me and my big mouth making out I can do stuff when really I can't. If you don't want me to write the article, I would understand. Tracy? Yeah, you're right. We do have stacks to get through. We'll be lucky if we get it finished tonight. Maybe we should do lunch. Is next Saturday okay for you? But that's not the end of my heart-rending story. for a lovely day out with her aunt. Bye, Lou. Bye. See you later. My dad's coming in a minute. Oh, sorry, I forgot. You don't belong to a family, do you? So, you don't belong to a species. Meet the Littlewoods. <laughs> You're just jealous, because you have to get a stranger to take you out. Jealous of your dad and his personality bypass? I'm going out for the day with a writer. You should see how they live. With a writer, life's always exciting and glamorous. Cup finals and parties. And rock concerts. And I'll be there, at the centre of it all. At least my dad comes to see me, which is more than can be said for some people's invisible mum. Tracy's mum might come any day. And that would be hilarious. Today of all days, Tracy's out with a writer woman and her mum turns up. Tracy, ready to go? Oh, hi, Cam. This is going to be the best match ever. Only six hours to kick off. Do we have everything? Crisps? Check. More crisps? Check. And more crisps, in Check. case we get peckish in between snacks. Check. Well, hey, what else could we possibly need? How about a television that works? Wasn't someone supposed to get that fixed? Mike! Tracy? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm staying here because my mum's probably coming today. That's great. She'll be here any minute with armfuls of presents from America. Oh, right, I see. Well, that'd be fantastic. Mind you, if we just popped out, I suppose we could. Phone in to check if she's arrived? Okay, well, another time, perhaps. Hey, not so fast. Look at her, she's so immature. Here we are. Is your proper car in for service? This is my proper car. It's a hair dryer. It's not the car that's important, it's the driver. 
Absolutely. My mum is a brilliant driver. She's fearless and fabulous. And we're completely unbeatable on any racetrack in the world. comes back, we'll soon be racing again. Of course you will. So where are we going? How about a picnic in the park? Call the news crews, warn the paparazzi. Tracy Bigger is going to the park. Well, I like the park. Of course you do, you're old. I bet you enjoy the cemetery as well. Are you this cheeky to everyone? Yeah, don't go thinking you're anyone special. <laughs> Tracy, you are one off. That's me. That must be why no one wants to foster me. I think I'd prefer a cheeky girl. It'd be more fun. Cam, mm -hmm. how much is actually the writer's earn? Pardon? How about lunch at your place? Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, OK. Yes, that one's fine too. And what about this one? Dads don't care. He just wants to see you. Doesn't matter which one you wear. <laughs> Why is it my fault? Who bought a microwave instead of a new telly? Me. And they promised on Wednesday they'd get this repaired. Me. And your point is? Where's the rest of it? Yeah, there's a bedroom upstairs. There isn't even a PC. A home without a computer. It's unnatural. There. Happy now? Oh. So what games do you have? Games? Well, what do you think these things are for? Well, let's write a story. Can't. I'm between ideas at the moment. Oh, writer's block. You're a real writer, then. Don't worry, I have a cure. Fortunately, unfortunately. It's a game. Unfortunately, Tracy had no ideas. Fortunately, this game could give her some. Unfortunately... Cam had gone completely barking mad. Fortunately, Tracy was there to administer the sanity drug, but... Unfortunately, they left the medical kit on the helicopter. And the nearest hospital was miles away through the jungle. And it was no ordinary jungle. It was inhabited by this ugly tribe of two-headed girls called the Justinians, who worship this little, dull, boring god called Dad. Unfortunately, the Justinians like to make everybody's life a total misery. But, fortunately, they were never going to beat us. What's this? Lunch. I'm having lunch with my dad, remember? Sure, but... I thought you might be getting hungry by now. He's probably stuck in traffic or something. He'll be here any minute. Listen, guys, I'll tell you what. How about we listen to the game on the radio? It's just as good. No way. It's life and death. It's only a game. Only a game? He's right. It's only a game. Hmm? Oh, right, fine. Operation Magnetic Storm. Action, guys. Fortunately, the incredibly talented and beautiful trade speaker so the world again. <coughs> Unfortunately, beautiful though she was, she didn't realise how big her gob was. Fortunately, Dr Can saved her, let her stay over in a tiny hospital, then moved in and then eventually fostered her and they lived happily ever after.
Oh, hang on, Tracy. Slow down. That I'm in no position to foster anybody. Hello? Oh, hi. Unfortunately, the world decided that Tracy Beaker wasn't allowed a nice loving home. Again. Why has he wronged me? There'll be a good reason. You'll see. Do you want to give him a call? I'll give him a while longer. Unfortunately, some people are so rude, they don't look off, I guess, properly. Like, yeah. Yeah, in the next couple of weeks, yeah. No, that'd be great. Fortunately, some guests can look after themselves. Okay. Tracy, did you want to phone in? Unfortunately, no, in my lap, my mum's probably been and gone by now. Why is it that everyone in the world has a better time than me? <sighs> Engaged. What are you doing hanging around up here? It's pointless. How do... I, I tried to fix the TV, but we hit a snag. Like what? It was an aerial thing. If one of us was big enough to put that out of the window, we could get a decent signal with that. What? Well, you mean... Tracy. Duke, um, has my mum been? No, uh, I'm sorry. There's uh, no sign of her. Okay. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> now. Tracy, this is great. <laughs> Super Tracy saves the world from the evil social workers from Planet X. How exactly? I realise that the dumping ground is the centre of all world evil, so I do the only thing possible. Which is? It's obvious. Create an army of Tracy Beaker clones and totally storm the place. Bye bye, dumping ground. Yay! Yeah! Still! Hey, we have to get going in five minutes. Ten. Is that a deal? Definitely. Ten minutes. I'll come quietly. No! No! Hey, how about writing some unfortunately adventures? With this? plugged into the telly. No. Really? That's what Operation Magnetic Storm was all about. A simple, dodgy fuse. So Mike stood there all afternoon for no reason. Yep. I don't think he'd be putting off repairs in the future. Do you? Families, huh? You need them. Um... 